All right, this is going to be, I think, the last one on power generation. <clears throat> There's not a lot here. I want to show, basically, this is a, a good way to kind of understand what a generator does versus a DC generator. Because when it comes to troubleshooting, my batteries aren't charging because of my generator. Look at what's involved here versus what's involved here. Right? There's a lot of things that you need to understand that happens on the output of an AC generator to get your batteries to recharge. Yes, AC generators will have alternators, but they are tiny. It is barely to just keep the battery that started the generator running. There might be a 30 amp, 20 amp alternator. Your generator should have a dedicated battery. Most don't, but they should. And that battery is going to get its own charge from the alternator from the generator. But once you output, the real purpose of an AC generator is to run AC loads. And AC loads are going to involve, of many things, a battery charger. And so with an AC generator, you're basically creating AC, you're effectively replicating what shore power does, and you're recharging your batteries with a battery charger. A DC generator outputs literally direct current, and it goes straight pipe via fuse, always a fuse, to the battery. So conceptually, that's the difference between an AC generator and a DC generator to recharge the batteries. Okay. Any questions on this? Because I'm not going to be coaching people on how to buy an AC generator in this presentation because that could be a full on day or weekend. But any questions on generators and DC generators? You still need a charge regulator in front of the battery, right? Or is it built in? No, the DC generator has it. It's part of it. There's a regulator, absolutely. There has to be. Same thing that a generator also has an AC regulator inside the generator as well. Yes? You run the same risk if you have a switch? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, the question is, do you run the same risk not having a switch? Um, absolutely. You, you want to have the alternator output directly out to this battery here. You might not even start the, gen the DC generator from the same battery as you're outputting, right? You might have the engine battery start that and then this go to your house. Because you don't want to be in a chicken and egg situation. I see this situation all the time. And when we're designing an electrical system, the very battery that you're trying to save is the battery that gets you out of trouble. It's like saying your get out of jail card is only at home. Well, you can't get your get out of jail card if you don't have it on your person. So it's essential that a generator be started from a battery that is separate than the battery you are worried about. And that's a common thing that we do is saying, well, this is crazy. And a generator battery is not expensive. We're talking about $100, $150 to put a dedicated battery just to start the generator. So that is probably one of the top things that I do on the power boats is I'm like, no, this is crazy. We're putting, still have a switch, everything's there, but we're not going to start the generator from one of your house batteries. That's the whole point of having a generator is that when all else fails, you have the trump card. You're like, I got this. Let me start my generator, run the chargers, and then the problems go away. Yeah, you would have that. That's absolutely true. And you would have that either in line, depending if they DC chain the alternator, the starter, or you might have it completely separate if they're starting the DC generator from another battery. Yeah, it's a separate battery. Correct. Could that switch, that, I run the risk of that? No, well, it depends, it depends again, and I don't know. I can't give, I don't give, because those can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, advice is one of those things. You never want to make generalizations. I'm talking... You have to know if your alternator, your DC generator, the output is going to the same battery that starts or is it going to a different battery? It depends on how it's wired. Yeah, A remote battery switch is the same thing as a battery switch. It's just, it's there for convenience. DC generators are awesome because most boats now are going to inverter-based boating, meaning a lot of boats are actually running all AC loads on an inverter and the batteries are what runs the boat. So really the thing that matters is recharging the batteries. Yes? Oh, the Honda generator? Yeah, the Honda generator. Yeah. Downsides? Downsides is you're losing the, there's no grounding. You're back to circa 1898. You got two wires. There's no, there's no return path. So that's one issue. 
Question was, downsides of using a Honda portable generator on your boat. Well, besides the noise, it's far from being quiet. That's a reality. Yeah, that's when it runs in the forest and there's no echoing. Let me tell you, on the water, <laughs> anybody who's heard a Honda 2000 generator on the water says it's quiet, <laughs> they probably don't even know what the sound of music is like. <laughs> like, they've lost all hearing. You can hear those things a long way. In the forest, it's probably different because in the forest, you know, you're RVing, everything's like absorbing the sound. Water does not absorb sound. It just, one, that'd be one thing, but that depends. Vibration depends. Those are just inconveniences. For me, what stopped me using mine was using it in desolation sound in the winter, so I was alone. Didn't feel too bad. Put it on the transom facing aft. Dodger, Bimini, no side windows. Companionway is closed. Lazarette com boards are completely closed. I'm off the boat, off the boat. I'm at anchor swinging and I'm thinking, okay, the exhaust is pointing aft and I'm swinging, right? I got this, like I'm thinking river kayaking days, like I'm like, it's just gonna be blown back. Like I'm good, like what are the chat? And I've got the companionway and the hatch boards closed and also my vents are facing, the cow vents are facing forward. I'm like, I got this go on a tender ride, because I can't hear the sound for three hours, because I still can hear music. Go on a tender ride for three hours, come back. The carbon monoxide detectors in the boats are beeping. That was the last time I used it. I was like, risk reward. I'm like, I have a boat, life is pretty good. I don't want to throw it away. I'm like, what if my carbon monoxide detector isn't working properly? I'm like, I'm not taking a chance. Now, I'm very risk adverse. I'm off the spectrum and risk adverse. I'm always thinking risk reward, risk reward, risk reward. I'm like, there's gotta be a better way. And I went Honda generator and now it's a backup for the shop. I love it, it's awesome, but I'm not having it on my boat. And the second point that I was saying is the fact that the ground is not grounded. There's no ground. It's two wires, it's neutral and hot. So that's the other issue. Any other questions on generators? So we're gonna take a short break, about 10 minutes, and then we're gonna uh, dial into power sharing, all right?